you know, in a world that is captivated by the, the latest uh, iPhone release or maybe the, the newest fashion trend, have you ever paused to ponder this? What does it truly mean to live a holy life? Not usually something that you think about when you're shopping online or, or standing in a, a, a line to, 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 to get your app, the Apple store to get your newest phone. But as we continue this morning in our exploration of, of holiness, we, we've journeyed through the, the profound revelations of Isaiah to, to the concrete commandments of, of Exodus. And, and now we arrive at this pertinent question for our times, is how do we practice holiness in a society that is steeped in materialism? As we approach Thanksgiving, right? and, we, and we prepare for Christmas, it's no secret that our society is deeply entrenched in materialism. Uh, recent studies have uh, revealed startling figures that, that Americans spent over $1 trillion in non-essential goods in 2020 alone. Even more concerning, 70% of Americans acknowledge that our society is too materialistic, but yet 87% of young adults still prioritize buying and owning things. Now, this contradiction right between the acknowledgement and action mirrors the struggle that we face when aligning our lives with, with God's call for holiness. You see, our society's dance with materialism, it's not new. For decades, right, the pursuit of more and more has been the drumbeat growing ever louder with each new technological advance in marketing blitz. Yet, the chase for material gain stands in stark contrast to the timeless call in Scripture. It's a call to holiness, unchanging and unfazed by society's shifting sands. I mean, looking back, we see that materialism's roots run deep in our history, from the Industrial Revolution's focus on, on production and consumption to to today's digital age where online shopping and social media influencers, they they affect our desires and what we long for and yearn for, and materialism has evolved. Now, it's not just about having more. It's about how these possessions define our status and our success. This historical context sets the stage for this discussion we're going to have on holiness in a material-driven world. I imagine you're, you're, for a moment you're, you're standing in a store and you're surrounded by all of these gadgets and luxury items and whatever your favorite store is, and each one of them gives you a promise, a promise of happiness or of status. But I want you to recall the words of Jesus who asked, what good is it for someone to to gain the whole world, yet to forfeit their soul? You see, these statistics are are more than numbers. They they tell a a story of hearts that are ensnared. When when over 63% of American families carry credit card balances, indicative of materialistic spending, it's not just an economic issue. It's a spiritual one. You know, our relationships, our peace of mind, and our very identity risk being defined by what we own instead of who we are in Christ. Now, are we like the rich young ruler, you know, holding on to material wealth at the expense of spiritual richness? I mean, how often do our spending habits reflect our heart's true treasures? But today we're going to delve into 1 Peter chapter 1, looking at verses 13 through 16, where we are called to examine our lives in the mirror of God's Word to discern where materialism has clouded our call to holiness. Now, look, the journey isn't about guilt. That's not my goal. 
but it's about realignment, aligning our hearts, our priorities, and our very lives with the holy standard that is set by our Heavenly Father. So as we navigate, oh, the allure of this upcoming Black Friday sales and the temptation to define our worth by what we own, let's ponder this critical question. Are we merely consumers driven by the latest trends, or are we followers of Christ called to a higher standard of living? And as we question our role in a world captivated by materialism, pondering uh, whether we are mere consumers or followers of Christ, we turn to the wisdom that Scripture guides us. The Bible doesn't just offer answers but it gives us a profound perspective shift, uh, one that challenges the very foundations of how we view success and fulfillment. For for in a society that gauges success by this accumulation of possessions and and adherence to the trend, Scripture, it tells us to be, be different, to go down a different path. It calls us to be sober minded. But what does it mean to be sober-minded in a world that constantly bombards us with messages of materialism? I mean, how do we, as followers of Christ, discern between the fleeting allure of of temporal pleasures and the enduring promise of eternal treasures? Well, we're going to explore this together. Our first point this morning is choosing what matters most. Choosing what matters most. You know, the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, we read these words. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, being sober-minded, as Peter instructs here in this verse, means having a clear and focused mind that discerns between the the temporal pleasures and the eternal treasures. Now, this call isn't an isolated command, but it is the cornerstone in the architecture of Christian living. For our minds are a battleground where choices are weighed and decisions are made. In an age where consumerism is not just a practice, but it's a philosophy. Being sober-minded is our shield against this onslaught of material temptations. You know, as we approach the, the holiday season, bombarded with all of the advertisements enticing us to spend, 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 let's question the motivation behind our spending. Are we buying to fill a void? Or are we genuinely seeking to enrich our lives and others. You know, being sober-minded calls us to, to make purchases with purpose, with prayer, aligning our spending with our spiritual walk. You know, in, in the sea of sales and specials, our true treasure remains in the heart of God's Word. Consider the story of Anna. Anna is a dedicated nurse. She'd been saving up for years for what she thought was her dream vacation, a luxurious cruise around the Mediterranean. It was something that she had promised herself as a reward for her years of hard work and personal sacrifices. However, as time approached for her to book this holiday, Anna found herself at a crossroads. That same year, she had become more involved in her church and It really shifted her perspective. She had seen families that struggled to make ends meet. Children who had, man, they had never even enjoyed the the joy of a simple vacation. One Sunday after a particularly moving sermon about living generously, Anna just felt this tug on her heart, and, and she began to realize that while this cruise was a dream of hers, perhaps there was a deeper joy that she hadn't experienced yet, the joy of giving. So after much contemplation and and prayer, she she made a courageous decision. Instead of the the luxurious cruise, Anna chose a modest family trip to a a nearby national park. 
Now, this was a far cry from the extravagant holiday that she had planned, but, but this decision came with a significant addition. With the money that she saved, Anna, Anna gave it to her church's Lottie Moon offering for international missions. You know, the impact of Anna's decision went far beyond her expectations. For not only did her family have a memorable and a bonding experience in the beauty of God's creation, but her choice also inspired others in the community. Her story became a testimony in her church and encouraged many to rethink their definition of of joy and fulfillment. You see, Anna's decision redefined joy in the context of God's kingdom. It wasn't just about giving up something, but it was about gaining something far more valuable, a a real sense of purpose, of community connection, and a deep fulfillment that comes from aligning one's actions with one's faith. So as we plan our holiday spending, I want you to ask this. Is this purchase adding to my life's mission? Or is it just a momentary pleasure? Opt for experiences that, that build relationships over extravagant gifts or, or over the, uh, just this materialistic gaining more and more in something that any next month or next year you'll toss away just because something better has come out. You see, being sober-minded, though, is just the beginning we're also called to action. This means that we must actively choose a lifestyle that, let's face it, may go against the grain of the material-driven culture. Now, Jesus exemplified this all throughout his life, right? He chose simplicity and meaningful relationships over material wealth, teaching us that true richness lies in our relationship with God and with others. See, in a world that is racing for the latest Christ calls us to pause for the eternal. It's not just about rejecting material possessions outright, but it's about discerning this heart behind our choices. And so are we seeking to a home to foster love and community, or are we driven by a desire to impress? See, our choices, even in fundamental aspects like Like, what kind of house are we going to live in should reflect our commitment to God's holiness. For unchecked materialism can quietly erode our spiritual foundations. It can shift our focus from from God's providence to our own personal gain. So this holiday season, oh, let us guard our hearts against materialistic values that distract us from our true purpose In this season of giving, let's give the gift of of a godly example. Let our actions declare that our loyalty to heavenly treasures over earthly ones, supported by our church family in this journey toward holiness. And as we commit to setting our godly example, demonstrating our, our loyalty to heavenly treasures, we must also recognize that this commitment extends beyond just singular acts of generosity or moments of choice. It, it really it weaves into the very fabric of our daily lives, impacting every decision that we make, whether it's a big one or a small one. You know, as we look at holiness, as we, we understand it from Scripture, it, it, it's not just confined to the, the sacred hours of worship in a sanctuary. Right? It's a lifestyle. It's an ongoing choice that, that permeates our weekdays and just as much as our weekends. And it's in these routine moments, these ordinary decisions, where we often find the most significant opportunities to embody the holiness that we are called to. Which brings us to our next point, living out your faith. Living out your faith. Holiness is a lifestyle, right? It's a choice that we make every single day in every decision. You know, our weekdays, oh, they're filled with with different opportunities 
to choose between the temporary allure of materialism and the eternal beauty of a holy life. I get it. We, we, we understand the pull uh, of material desires, especially in this culture that constantly entices us with always having to have the latest and greatest. But it's not just about the things that we buy. It's about the mindset behind our choices. And I, it's so easy to get caught up in the excitement of sales or the pressure to keep up with the Joneses, especially during the holiday season. But as Peter describes in verse 14, we're reminded, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. You see, this passage here, it calls us to, to live a life that transcends our former ways, a life where, where our daily choices, they reflect our new identity in Christ. But we need to be gentle with ourselves as we navigate these decisions. It's not about perfection, but it's about progress. Each choice we make in favor of simplicity and generosity and integrity is a step toward closer to the life that God has called us to live. So tomorrow, Monday, the Monday before Turkey Day, as you face the choices about what to buy or where to spend your time, or how you interact with others, I want you to ask yourself, does, does this action, does this thought, uh, does this reflect my commitment to holiness? Does this bring me closer to God, or does it pull me away? Remember that every dollar spent, every word spoken, and every action taken is a testament to our values. See, every dollar spent is not just a transaction, but it is a testimony of our values. In James 1, 22, we're reminded that we are to but be doers of the word, and not just hearers only. This means that we must apply our faith in practical ways, choosing to spend time in prayer over mindless scrolling on social media or uh, opting for meaningful family time over late, offer, late office hours chasing promotions. But we live in a world that often equates success with our material wealth. Embracing our identity as followers of Christ offers, oh, a powerful alternative because it's a journey of discovering worth not in our possessions but in our relationship with God now everywhere we look we're measured not with a, a ruler or, or a tape measure but we're measured by what we own by what we look like by what we achieve materially <laughs> it's it's this relentless comparison game. But as believers, we're called to be to a different standard, a standard that is set by Christ. Our identity is rooted in something that's far greater than worldly possessions. As Paul writes in Galatians 2.20, For I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, this profound truth redefines our understanding of success and worth. But let's be honest. It's not easy to swim against the cultural current. But remember this. Our worth in God's eyes is not based on material achievements. It's based on his love for us. A love, oh, a love so deep that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die for, for our redemption. 
So today, reflect on your identity in Christ. How does this identity shape your choices? What you aspire for? How does this identity, oh, infiltrate what you think about, what you do? Oh, let's strive to make decisions that align with our holy calling, not just, you know, in the big life-altering decisions and actions, but in the everyday moments. For our worth is not measured by our wealth, but by our walk with Christ. And as we embrace our identity in Christ and strive to align our daily decisions with our holy calling, we begin to understand that this journey, oh, it is not about making the right choices, but it's about undergoing a profound transformation, a change that reshapes not just our actions, but our very being. This brings us to the the heart of our message today, the transformative power of holiness. It's it's a journey, oh, that goes far beyond external conformity to divine standards. It's about an internal metamorphosis. Use an old grade school science term. Where our values, where our desires, our perspectives are aligned with God's. And in 1 Peter 1, 16, we're not merely called to imitate God's holiness, but we're called to in, invited to partake in it, to let it permeate, to redefine our every aspect of our lives, which brings us to the last point, the real change within us, the real change within us. 1 Peter 1, 16, invites us here into this transformative journey. Look what he says here in verse 16. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Now, the call to holiness is a pathway to experiencing God's character, reshaping our values, our actions, and our entire outlook on life. You know, the concept of holiness in Scripture, it's it's dynamic. It's not merely about avoiding what is wrong, but it's actively pursuing what is right, embodying God's love and mercy and justice in our daily lives. And in a society that equates value with material success, the call to holiness invites us to find deeper meaning and purpose. It's a call to look beyond the transient allure of material possessions to the enduring richness of a life that is aligned with God's will. So as we, the church, commit to this holy journey, as we embrace a life that is continuously transformed by God's grace, oh, each step we take in faith is a step away from worldly treasures and values, and toward the divine nature of Christ within us. Imagine Emma and Lucas, uh, they're a young couple that are immersed in the fast-paced rhythm of city life. Lucas is an ambitious investment banker. He was often, you can imagine, consumed by his career, while his wife Emma it's a dedicated teacher who, who juggled the, her demanding job with her dreams of starting a family. On a chilly Christmas Eve, they attended a candlelit service at their local church, seeking ah, just a moment of peace and quiet amid the holiday rush. The church was adorned with all of the lights and the greenery, creating a a serene ambience uh, that contrasted with the bustling streets that were outside. And and, and the pastor's message that night was, was about the birth of Jesus and how this single event transformed the world. He spoke of Jesus' life as as a model of holiness, not in, in all the big things, but in humble service and love. The message wasn't loud and forceful. But it resonated deeply with Emma and Lucas. 
It was a subtle reminder the, of the true spirit of Christmas in the call to live a life reflective of Christ's love and humility. The message, it, it became a turning point for them. Lucas began to reevaluate his relentless pursuit of financial success, recognizing that, you know, he had overshadowed the more meaningful aspects of his life, like his faith, his relationship with Emma. But Emma also found a renewed sense of vocation in her teaching, viewing it not just as a job, but as an opportunity to positively influence young minds. And as the year unfolded, they they made small but, oh, so significant changes. Lucas started to use his financial skills to advise a nonprofit, helping those that are less fortunate. As Emma, she started a, a Bible study at her school with her fellow teachers, fostering a safe environment where she and her coworkers could grow in their faith. The following Christmas season was very different for Emma and Lucas. Instead of indulging on lavish spending, they focused on acts of kindness, organizing a holiday meal for the homeless, participating in a toy drive for children in need, and and spending time with elderly members in their community who are so lonely around the holidays. Their story... It's born from a quiet message on Christmas Eve, illustrates the transformative power of embracing a life of holiness. It it shows us that true change often happens in subtle shifts, in choices that align more with the heart of Christ, especially in a season that celebrates his birth. You know, Emma in Lucas's journey also reminds us that That holiness is about living out the love, compassion, and humility that Jesus embodied. And bringing light and hope to those that are around us. For in our quest for holiness, we actively pursue what is right. Allowing our transformed lives to be a light of God's grace and love. And when individuals embrace this holiness, oh, the effects ripple out in society, in our churches, in your home, in your workplace. I mean, consider how acts of kindness and and integrity can inspire others, leading a community to be more rooted in compassion and empathy. Holiness lived out can be a powerful change for societal good. The life of holiness extends its impact far beyond just our own personal transformation. It influences everything that we encounter, our families and communities, and even just the broader culture. As far musicians would come forward at this time as we uh, come to a close of our, our journey today. I want us to I want us just to take a moment to reflect on, on what it means to live a life of holiness in a world hmm, that sadly often values material over the spiritual. We've explored the challenges, the, the daily applications, uh, and the transformative power of, of a holy life, but now it's time for us to turn our hearts inward, to ask ourselves. Are we ready to fully embrace this call to holiness? In the quietness of this moment, I invite you to ponder where you stand on this journey toward holiness. Perhaps you've been struggling with the pressures of materialism, or maybe... You're seeking a a deeper transformation in your relationship with God. You know, the enemy wants you to feel like you're alone. You know what? That what difference does my little choice make? Can I really 
change things for good? I mean, one little choice, what's that going to do for my life? But look, I want you to know that you're not alone on this journey. The Holy Spirit is within you, and he will guide you, and he will comfort you, and he will empower you. So if you feel the Holy Spirit stirring in your heart, I'm urging you to, to make a change or maybe to, to take a step closer to God. Oh, I encourage you oh, to respond. Whether it's a commitment to embrace holiness in your daily choices or a desire to deepen your relationship with Christ. Oh, maybe you need prayer and you need support. This is your moment. But as we reflect on the call to holiness, it's vital that we remember the foundation of our faith. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that while we are still sinners, what Christ died for us. See, it's this un act of unconditional love that offers us salvation, that, that, that builds us this bridge to a holy life in Jesus. Salvation is not about perfection. It's about accepting God's grace, acknowledging our need for a Savior, and committing ourselves to following Him. So if you've never made this decision, never sought to follow Christ, I invite you to do so today. Oh, it is the most important decision that oh, you will ever make. It's one that will completely transform your life, that brings you into this family of believers, and it starts you on, on the path to holiness. So I ask if you just bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment. Wherever you are in your life, I really just want you to be open to the Spirit's moving this morning. What's He calling you to do? Where is that tug on your heart? Is it to change your focus this Christmas season? Maybe change how your family does things. But to reject the materialism of this world. Maybe you need to, to focus on pursuing holiness. Or maybe you just need to be saved from your sins. Wherever you are, know this, that you do not do it alone. But we do it in, in the power of Christ, in the moving of the Holy Spirit in us.